Hello, everyone. This is Al Fadi, and I want to welcome you back to a continuation of this series. And we have been unpacking a number of things related to the um, uh, origin of the Quran, the Aramaic connection to the language of the Quran, and how things uh, started in an Aramaic uh, way uh, have been reinterpreted or maybe corrupted, if you wish, by adding either uh, an Islamic theology to it or uh, Arabization of the meaning itself. Today, we're going to take a look at uh, other uh, also wording or letters in the Quran known as the disjointed letters, also known as the mysterious letters. Uh, some of the chapters, like chapter two, for instance, will start with these letters like Alif, Lam, Mim. You know, you look at that and you say, what is this? Uh, and, and there are so many views on this, by the way. So that's why it's called mysterious letters, because it's uh, hardly, uh, uh, you know, basically um, uh, anyone can really come up with a definitive answer to those. You would expect at least Muhammad could have explained it, but uh, I don't think even Muhammad was able to explain all of these letters uh, in a way that will put this controversy to rest. With me here in studio is Dr. Jay Smith to help us unpack those mysterious letters, or at least look at those mysterious letters now with a connection to the Aramaic roots. Now, to understand that, we need to carry on from what we did last time when we looked at chapter 23 and we also looked at chapter 70 of the Quran. Thomas uh, Alexander has really helped us out with this. He said well, back in the German school, they've been actually looking at this for quite a few years, not just Gunther Lulling and uh, uh, Christopher Luxemburg. Others have been looking at it as well. And what they have found is that there are lots of antecedents that are rest written in Aramaic, but there's also Jewish antecedents, there's Persian words that are there. Uh, there are even ideas and words that come from Buddhism, that comes from the Far East, and a lot of Gnostic material. Now, this is not new to you, and we know this, and this has been since 1910, when Sarah Claire Tisdale wrote a book on this, all the, uh, all the foreign words in the Quran that are nothing to do with Arabic and certainly not to do with the Arabic meaning. So this, is, this has been around for over 100 years that we've known about this. But what was fascinating is that they said you can see an awful lot of the Quranic material, especially on the theology, comes out of the Old Testament Aramaic Peshta and the New Testament Diatessaron, written by Tatian uh, in about 140 AD, where he t uh, amalgamated the four Gospels into one text for the Syriac world and for the Aramaic-speaking world. And so that's why so much of this is so easy to find, because it's already written up. And if it was available, if it's available today, it was certainly even more available in that part of the world, uh, in places like Damascus and in places like Stesiphon, which is, became Baghdad later, places like Hira, which became Kufa later, and places like Fustat, which became Cairo later. They, the, uh, these archaic names of these places that still exist today, they're very ancient, they're very old. And so that's why it's important that we go back to these texts. And when you go back, you will see that even the word Islam in Aramaic means in accordance with Scripture. Not in Arabic. It means in, in, in Aramaic. The word itself comes from Aramaic. It means in accordance with Scripture. So these are lectionaries that are liturgies in accordance with Scripture. So even the word of, the, of what then became the name for the religion is in accordance with Scripture. And what Scripture? Well, of course, the Quran didn't exist at that time. This would have to be the biblical Scriptures. This is the, it's referring to the Diatessaron, and it's referring to the Peshta, uh, written in Syriac. Those are the Scriptures it's referring to. Pe Peshta or Peshita means the simple, basically, or simple by it, technically speaking. Good, I didn't know that. So yeah. you've now inter you've introduced yeah. a whole other idea yeah. that I wasn't aware of. So when he when they went back there, they said in the German school, they also looked at the word the word Quran. What do you think Quran is in Aramaic? Well, I heard that uh, it comes from Kariana, basically to recite things. It's a recitation. Yeah. A recitation yeah. of what? Yeah. It's a recitation in church services. Yeah, right. These are called liturgical liturgy. things. Yeah. And I don't know if you've ever been to uh, any of our uh, Orthodox churches. I've been, I've been to, to at least uh, one of them, and you see how they recite things. And what is it they're reciting? Uh, liturgical uh, prayers, uh, about, verses, you know, about the, the Lord, you know, exactly about yeah. Jesus, aren't they? Yeah. These are all worship. These are worship, and it's done right. every week. It's always done on a Sunday or whatever day they choose. But it's always done to bring people to take from what is recitation from the scripture and to bring it back as praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. And we do that with hymns today. They also did it with hymns back then. And so this is all part of that process. Uh, he looked at a chapter 12, verse one and two uh, in the Quran, which mentions that the Quran is literally a lectionary. It says so in the Quran. It actually exposes what it's all about. If you just read chapter 12, verse one and two, cha chapter three, verse seven, delineates for the reader 
which were the canonical scriptures and that's which were apocryphal. It even warns them. In chapter 2, verse 79, when it talks about those Jews who do not know the book, they but guess, they take what they know and they write with their own hand and call it the books. It's, de it's already making a delineation. Be careful of those apocryphal writings, the Jewish. It's saying even the Jewish apocryphal writings, there are those which are the book and those which are not the book and those which are not the book are written by the Jews. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Don't trust them is what it's saying, of which the Quran is full of. Right. Now, now we come to these letters. And he said, when you look at these mysterious letters that no one seems to understand, Lam, Aleph, Mim, what does it mean? No one, can, no one can understand it until you put it back into the Aramaic. And when you put it back into the Aramaic, he says, these letters, these are really, they are, they are references to the Psalms of David. It's telling you which Psalm you're going to be actually pulling the material from. These are a warning for the people who are doing, who are reading, reading liturgy as to which psalm they come from. So it's like a key to the psalms. Right. It's as simple as that. Now, why is it no one's thought of this before? Because no one's bothered to look at the Aramaic. The Aramaic exposes it. These were used as a key to refer to the different psalms of David so that the readers could know from which psalm the liturgy of that text was being borrowed. It's basically saying this is coming from Psalm 119. This is coming from Psalm 98. This is coming from Psalm 24. And then you read the rest of the text and it, it comes right out of those Psalms, but you have to go to the Aramaic to be able to find it. It's as simple as that. Right. And that's really, uh, it's been fascinating to me because uh, you come across a lot of them, you know, Saad, Noon, uh, Alif, Lam, Mim, Ha, Mim, you know, uh, Kaf, Ha, uh, yeah, in Saad, in chapter 19, all these, uh, I've, I've never really found a satisfactory answer. You read the commentaries and they go all over the board uh, when it comes to what does it mean? Why is it there? I mean, you would expect Muhammad at least would have provided an explanation and put it to rest, but obviously that's not the case. What are we going to talk about next? The next one is what one of my favorite, this is probably of this whole series, this is my number one. This is right at the top. Uh, this is the penultimate. Well, not quite the penultimate, but this is the one that I like the most because uh, we're gonna inter we're gonna find out what the Quran really is talking about. Who the Quran is really the talking about? The substance of the book itself, or mm -hmm. at least in its original form. Absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, and thank you everyone for watching. Until next time, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sira International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.